This simulation starts with Erwin and Ruthie placed a distance of 15 meters away from the elevator. When we hit play, we see them race to the elevator. And they end up in a tie. Looking at the two sliders, we see that both robots were programmed with an aggressive running profile. This means they accelerated quickly, kept up a high speed through most of the run, and only slowed down a little bit at the end. The graph at top right shows the position of each robot as a function of time. If you grab the handle there and scrub it backwards, you can see a ghost representing the position of the robot at each point in time. The numbers on the graph that pop up next to the handle show the moment in time followed by the position in meters rightward from the start. As you can see, there are two handles, one for each robot. The graph at top left shows the instantaneous velocity of each robot as a function of time. Again, when you scrub with the handle in the right-hand graph, you can see the graph at left change. The velocity at any point is plotted on the vertical axis. The shaded area, then, has the units of meters per second from the vertical axis times seconds from the horizontal axis. This means that the shaded area has units of meters, and in fact, this shaded area does represent the position of the robot rightward from the starting point. In general, the change in the position of an object is represented by the area bounded by that object's velocity versus time profile. Let's program Irwin's running profile to confused. A very intense looking velocity versus graph pops up at top left. Let's hit play to cause them to run again. You'll notice that at right around two seconds after the start of the race, Irwin's velocity is very, very high. We can see that in many ways. First, let's look at the graph at top left. The velocity at time t equals two seconds is six meters per second. Now let's look at the graph at the right. Scrubbing to t equals two seconds, we see that the slope of the position versus time graph is very steep. If Irwin is moving quickly, then his position is changing quickly over a short period of time. The so-called rise of this graph represents the change in position. The so-called run of the graph represents the time period over which that change occurred. This means the slope, which is rise over run, represents the rate at which Irwin's position is changing. This is, of course, nothing more than Irwin's velocity. As we scrub through time, we can see that the slope of Irwin's position versus time graph is lower at some times. These times exactly match those times when Irwin is moving more slowly, as evidenced by the graph at left. There are a few more running profiles from which you can choose. Play around and see what you can discover.